Ahoy hoy everybody and welcome to another album review and as you saw before the for the theme tune um, first of all Discogs randomly picked a 7 inch single Prince's 1999 back with Little Red Corvette the reissue um, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10 then the album it picked up was The Greatest Hits and it was this one Status Quo's Excess All Areas of The Greatest Hits I am obviously including Greatest Hits in this series there is an art to The Greatest Hits that I feel deserve to be talked about so I am covering them, I am including them when they're randomly picked similarly I will be if any compilations come up I will include those as well I will be doing reviewing these slightly differently and I won't be going into much depth on the songs for start there's 40 tracks on here so we'd be fit here forever but I'm going to assume because they're the greatest hits that you are familiar with the big tracks and I don't need to talk about them um, any more obscure tracks are covered in a little bit more depth, but again, due to the sheer volume, not much. But I will be scoring each track out of 10 and then working out an over percentage, overall percentage for the album. I'll quickly show you this copy. So it's a two CD set released in 2004. Uh, you can see a nice replica of a Vertigo Swirl on disc one. And then that's disc two. And a sneeze. And then the booklet is actually stuck into the middle, but it's a nice little booklet. A little history of a band by Mick Wall yep then cover of each tra track or sleeve if it was uh, um, well. then for each track an image either the single the sleeve the album it was on um, telling you about the track where it was from how it did in the charts so it goes through the first disc is largely 70s, or whether there are a couple of 80s and one noughties track in there. The second disc, a uh, bit of advertisement in the middle there. The second disc has some 70s as well, but is mainly the rest of it. So the 60s tracks and then 80s and later. A little photo of the band at the back and all the credits. So it's a nice little selection uh it's not a greatest hits the sticker calls it a best of that's more accurate there's 40 tracks on here as i say eight of them are album tracks two of them were singles but were in no way hits uh one of them reached number 83 and the other was 50 something and then two there was two new tracks on here which were released as singles and did reasonably well but at the time of release they had no right to call them hits so I would rather say it was a best of than a greatest hits. There's also two decent hit singles that have been missed off this, plus some others, but we'll talk about that at the end. Um, but yes, now we will go on to the track. So yeah, I'm not going to be doing what I do on normal album reviews where I play a little excerpt from the track, show you what I've scored it and talk about it. Um, I'm going to be racing through these a fair bit because as I say, there's 40 tracks and I'm assuming you're familiar with most of them. So track one is Caroline, classic track, great opener, 10 out of 10. Track two is Down Down, classic track, another great song, 10 out of 10. Uh, Down Down was their only number one hit single as well. Track three, Paper Plane, classic track, 10 out of 10. Track four is Big Fat Mama, which is the first of the album tracks. Musically, it's really good. It opens excellently and the music's really good throughout, but the actual song, the melody, it's, it's good, but it's not great. So I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Number 5 is Roll Over, Lay Down. It's an excellent track. It's not quite a classic. I think it works better live than it does on the studio version. It's 9 out of 10. Number 6 is Softer Ride, which is another album track. It's another very strong song. 9 out of 10. Track 7, Don't Waste My Time, another album track, it's a typical Quo track, they found their sound in the early 70s, the boogie shuffle, southern bluesy type sound, and they, they did, you know, experiment a little bit, but a lot of their tracks follow that formula, and it's the bits on top of the track that make them classics or not. You know, it's the melody of, of the um, the tune, you know, the, um, how catchy it is or anything like that. You know, it elevates them, the solos, things like that. And this one 
it was just a bog standard Quo track with nothing special on it. I'm going to give it 7 out of 10. Uh, track 8 is Little Lady and we have another album track. Uh, this is a strong song, good instrumental sections, 8 out of 10. Track 9 was Mystery Song. It's excellent but it just lacks a certain something which I think it got to number 11 in the charts and I've, you know it sort of explains it. Um, so that's a number 9, uh, number 9, that's a 9 out of 10. Uh, track 10 is Rain. In my eyes it is an underrated classic, it's a 10 out of 10. Track 11 is Break the Rules, that's another classic 10 out of 10 track. Track 12 is Something About You Baby I Like, which is a cover of a Richard Soup song. Uh, it's a good song, but it's not the best cover. It's not a great cover. It's okay. It's an 8 out of 10. Uh, track 13 is Hold You Back, which is another album track. Again, it's another just typical Quo song. Um, it's a bit better than... Uh, don't waste my time. So I'm giving it an 8 out of 10. Track 14, Rockin' All Over the World, their cover of a John Fogarty uh, track, although a number of times in my head I, could, I say Carl Fogarty. Um, but it's a track they've made their own. I would say most people know the Quo track. Certainly in the UK, nobody knows the John Fogarty version, apart from fans of John Fogarty. Famously, the track that didn't open Live Aid. No, the, the track that opened Live Aid was actually the band of the Coldstream Guard playing the National Anthem they played. Um, but to quote with the first band on them, it opened a rockin' all over the world. Willow's just come in. Uh, it's a classic. It's 10 out of 10, easily. Uh, track 15 is Whatever You Want. Similarly, classic track. Excellent. 10 out of 10. What's Willow doing? Alright. Going up on my window soon. Turn your way. Hurry up. Behave. Uh, track 16 is Don't Drive My Car. Um, it's sort of funky status quo. It reminded me a lot of Another Brick in the Wall. Uh, it's from 1980, so it's the same time as Another Brick in the Wall. I don't think it's a copy. I think it's just, you know, um, what is it they use? Parallel convergence or whatever it is they say you know two similar things happening at the same time it's a good track it's nice to you know it's a nice a lot up to here has been very crow booky shuffle type track um but it's not great um so i've given it eight out of ten track 17 is again and again it's a good song there's something about the production I didn't quite like, particularly at the start. It sounded a bit tinny to me. I wasn't mad on the production, so I've only given it 8 out of 10. Uh, track 18 is 4500 Times, which is an album track, but it's a live favourite. They play it, or have played it, at practically every live gig. Um, it's a strong song. I think it works better live. I think it popular because of the soloing in it rather than the actual song itself but it's, as I say it's strong 8 out of 10 and then the first disc ended after 79 minutes and 57 seconds with All Stand Up which was a flop single from 20, uh, from 2002 this was one of the one this reached number 50 what was it 51 53 something like that uh, 51 yeah I sort of went off, oh, it's that one, and it started. Oh, yeah, this isn't very good. But actually, it's not too bad. Um, it's a bit formulaic, but it's catchy as hell. So I've given it 8 out of 10. I started off with a 7, and I upped it to an 8. Um, so that's disc 1 done. I think disc 2 is a bit more interesting, although it, by and large it isn't as strong a disc. It's a bit more varied in sound. So disc two opens with You'll Come Round, which is one of the new tracks. Um, as I said, it was subsequently released as a single, did okay. It's an okay song, it's not great. It's typical Naughty's Quo, uh, 7 out of 10. The second new track is track two, Thinking of You. 
again, it was released as a single, didn't do quite as well. I found it a bit boring, very average. Um, five out of ten for that. Track three is Jam Side Down, which is another more recent song. Uh, to the, obviously, <laughs> this is 16 years, 17 years old, so, but more recent to the release of this. Um, it's written by Terry Britton and Charlie Daw. It's a, sort of a, an American pop rock song, you know, you could picture, I don't know, you know, Belinda Carlisle doing it or Michael Bolton or something like that. Um, but then it's got the Crow Boogie underneath it. It's not a great track. Uh, six out of ten. Number four is Creeping Up On You, which is an album track from the same album that Jam Side Down is on. Heavy, heavy, I was going to say, Heavy Traffic. Um, it's made me feel like it was a poor man's roll over lay down. Um, very similar rhythm, quite a similar me melody. But it was okay. Um, I'll give it a 7 out of 10. It's also a bit too long. It was, I think it was about five minutes and it could have finished quite happily after about three and a half. I do, it did find, listening to this on a whole, that quite a lot of our, yeah, five minutes in a second, quite a lot of our songs could have been a little bit shorter. Uh, track five is Down the Dust Pipe, which was their first song that gave them their new style. The, the, as I say, the boogie boogie rock, boogie shuffle, whatever you want to call it, um, style. It was a cover of a song written by Carl Grossman, an Australian singer-songwriter. The version on here is the 2003 re-recording from their Riffs album. Um, it's very similar to the 1970 original. See, their voices are slightly different and it's about 10 seconds longer. Um, it's an excellent track, 9 out of 10. Then number six, and um, we go back to the 60s and their early work, and we have Pictures of Matchstick Men, their first ever hit. Um, this is before they found their sound. This is when they were a psychedelic, poppy, rocky type band. Pictures of Matchstick Men is my favourite status quo song, 10 out of 10. Track seven is Ice in the Sun, which is a Marty Wilde cover from the same era. It's more of the same, but it's not quite as good, so I've given it an 8 out of 10. Uh, track 8 is In My Chair, which was a reasonable song. Um, it's, again, uh, 19, from 1970, it was a B-side to um, Down the Dust Pipe, and then had its a release on its own, I think. Is that right? Yeah. I've reached number 21. It's a more bluesy boogie song. It very much reminded me of Canned Heat. Uh, particularly on the road again, the vocal effects were similar and it had that same sort of beat to it. It was, it was decent enough, 7 out of 10. Uh, then we go to Gert und Euler, or Gert und Euler. Um, this is an album track. It did have, it was a B-side and then it did have a single release in Germany, I think it was, but didn't do anything. Um, so they class it as an album track on here. It's written by Rossi and Young, but for... Possibly copyright reasons. It was credited to Marston and Jones, um, who don't exist. It's a very, very different track. It's folky, Celtic, acoustic vibe. I loved it. Nine out of ten. Really, at this point, especially in this compilation, even though we've had the, the we've just had the sixties tracks, it's a real diversion, you know, and. and difference in sound and it really picked it up a bit. Uh, track 10 is Wild Side of Life, uh, written by Warren and Carter, cover of a country song by Hank Thompson. It's strong, I'm not a big country sound, but uh, country fan, but with the crow sound underneath it, I think it really works, 9 out of 10. Track 11 is Rock and Roll, probably the first slower song on the album. Um, it's a classic. I've always loved it. 10 out of 10. Track 12 is What You're Proposing. 
it's just another excellent song. It's not quite a classic, but it's way up there. That's 9 out of 10. Track 13 is The Wanderer. It's the cover of a Dion song written by Ernie Marson. I think that says. Can't read my own writing. It's a great song, but this is not a good cover. Is they've, they've done worse and we're coming up to worse, but it's a 7 out of 10 for me. Track 14 is Living on an Island. It's a slower song again. Get, sort of gives me an Eagles vibe. It's very good. I don't love it. It's an 8 out of 10. Track 15 is Margarita Time. Another slower song. Another track I've always liked. Don't quite love it. Again, it's an 8 out of 10. Track 16 is In the Army Now, which I know divides a lot of people. Personally, I've always liked it. Um, it's, you know, it's around the time I was getting into music that this was a hit. Or, you know, really getting into music. Um, but it's very atypical. It's a cover of a song by a Dutch duo, Bolland and Bolland. So, I like it. Um, 9 out of 10 for that one. Then... It goes downhill, and track 17 is When You Walk In The Room, which is a Jackie De, De, Jackie De Shannon cover. Um, on Wikipedia, when it tells you about this song, it's then got notable covers. Quo aren't even in the notable covers. It's a great, you know, it's a really good song, but they do it, and it just sounds like a average to poor pub band covering it. Uh, I've given it 5 out of 10. And I think that's largely just because it's a good song. Track 18 is Burning Bridges, which is based on an English folk song, Darby Kelly. It's catchy as hell. We'll ignore the Manchester United version. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Then we have 19, which is Fun Fun Fun, which is a cover of and with the Beach Boys. Fun Fun Fun, shit shit shit, 4 out of 10. And those four are for the bits where it sounds like the original and for the Beatles harm uh, and for the Beach Boys harmonies. Oh, can't stand this cover. Uh, number 20 is Old Time Rock and Roll, which is cover of the Bob Seger song, which is probably best known for its use in Risky Business. The scene where Tom Cruise is dancing around the living room in just his shirt and pants. That's it's that song. This was another flop single. This was the one that reached 1983. It's a pedestrian cover of a good song, so I've given it 5 out of 10. And then it ends with <laughs> then it ends with Anniversary Walks Part 1. It's a fun medley of covers. Um, they recorded it live in the studio, so it's a bit like Jive Bunny, but it's recorded live. Um, it was actually a, a longer piece, which they split into two, Part 1 and Part 2. Uh, part 2 was also a single, but it's not on here. But part one was, was the bigger hit. I've always had fun with it. You know, it's not great, but it's a nice little choice of cover, songs to cover and done well. Seven out of ten for that. Um, yeah, so that is it. So overall, it was 325 out of 400, which is 81%, which is pretty strong. You know, when, it's, when they're good, they're really good. But particularly that period where they were concentrating on covers and they weren't doing them very well has marked them down a bit. Two, the two big omissions from this album that were decent hits, so I think they were both top 20, possibly one of them might have been top 10, I can't remember. Um, and both tracks that I really like are Dear John and Old Rag Blues. They could quite easily have lost Fun Fun Fun, When You Walk In The Room, even The Wanderer, Old Time Rock and Roll, you know, any two of those got rid of those or two of the album tracks some of the album tracks I think deserve to be on, on here definitely Gert and Doola but when they just sound like normal Quo songs you know and just aren't as good as the singles what's the point of putting them on here surely you should be putting on album tracks either if they're particular fan favourites like 4500 times or if they show a different side of a band that aren't reflected in the singles that they've chosen to release. Um, so yeah, they could, you know, certainly one or two of the album tracks could quite easily have been dropped from this in favour of singles. Um, so yeah, how do I feel? Having given it 81%, which is a good score, 
you know, because there are some real classic tracks on here and they are a band I like. How do I feel about this compilation as a whole? Having said, you know, there are some omissions and some tracks that could have done with. I think it's a well presented package. I like that it's not strictly chronicle. I don't like so much chronologically arranged greatest hits. It, sometimes it works, but not always. I'm glad they haven't front loaded it with the hits. I mean, most of the hits are on disc one, but there are some reasonable hits on disc two as well. As I said at the start, it's largely 70s on disc one, which works. They've stuck the other tracks in there, a couple of 80s and one noughties one in there. Mixes it up a bit. And then track, uh, so CD2 is more the rest of the career, but with some 70s in it as well. So it, it works well as a nice mixture. Maybe they could have put a few more of the big songs that are on this one onto disc two, you know, maybe move, you know, got Caroline Down Down, Paper Plane, first three tracks, maybe move Paper Plane onto disc two and something something about your baby I like or something like that stick it on disc two as well that probably even up the, the classic quotient but a strong best of they have released many best ofs uh, there's I think three more after this one and three or four before it I from my limited experience I would say anything they release after 2004 you can pretty much ignore I know there'll be some Quo fans saying nonsense they've released some classic stuff and I'm sure they have but certainly hit singles wise there wasn't really anything after this whether that be the thought of a band or the thought of a radio station's not playing them probably a bit of both uh so yeah I would possibly argue that this is the last one that you really needed but I do think you should have a, a status quo greatest hits in your collection of some sort be it the uh, rolled gold not rolled gold 12 gold bars records which are easily found in records and charity shops or i say something like this or one of the similars okay so that's it that's long enough that is my review of excess all areas the greatest hits the best of status quo hope you enjoyed that i will be randomly choosing another album and that will be up sometime soon hopefully sooner i know there's been quite a big gap between the last album review and this one partly because i was a bit daunted by the size of this and didn't know how to do it and just having the time you know that's nearly three hours of music there that i had to sit and listen to and take notes but yeah so hopefully it might be a bit more frequent from now on thank you for watching like comment and subscribe and i'll see you in another video thanks bye <music>